All right, got home from a couple day trip for uh, consulting work and uh, found my 250 watt resistor in the mail so I can get worked on working on that uh, dummy load again. But I thought I'd show you the resistor. Um, it's pretty heavy duty. Uh, this is a 100 watt version and this is the 250. It's like, wow, it is stout. <laughs> Yeah, it is very stout compared to the uh, to the hundred watt, and uh, yeah, much bigger. So uh, let's take a look here. Um, so this is about uh, twenty millimeters long. This one's about uh, twenty-five millimeters long, and the resistor itself is about oh nine millimeters square. And the uh, copper slug that it's sitting on is uh, about five, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, about three millimeters thick here at the flange and a little bit thicker in the middle. Um, and then it has this little uh, uh, tab sticking out that would go to the, uh, to go to the circuit. Um, now this one was sold as used and it definitely looks like it was used in the little Got to be careful with these little flanges; they're going to break off someday. Um, but it's uh, it definitely looks used. This one was sold as new in the package, untouched by human hands. Um, ah, I don't quite buy it. I, I'm not I'm not upset. I only paid two dollars for you know, including shipping um, from Thailand, I think. Um, but anyway, um, it has a tab that's welded onto another tab. So I don't know anybody who would have manufactured that way at the beginning. I don't know why you would, why you would have done that. Um, so they could be reworked and then sold as quote new. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, it'll, it'll do fine for me. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out now is whether I want to bring my, um, I think it's a 14 gauge wire directly onto, onto here or, um, have a short little board. I, th I think I'm going to have a short little board. Um, so let me tell you what I'm going to do there. Um, I'm going to take some uh, just regular uh, bare, bare clad uh, circuit board and I'm going to um, uh, let's give me a piece of paper to draw on here. I'm just going to take a little board and I'm going to uh, put some mounting holes in it so I can I can tie it down to the uh, heat sink and uh, so some screws will go in these holes and then there'll be a, a stripe of copper uh, and the uh, that 50 ohm resistor have its little tab a little tab will come over and I'll solder it down and then my my wire will come and I'll solder it down and this will be held down so this will be solid so if there's any mechanical stress from this wire um, it won't impart it onto the uh, onto the 50 ohm resistor these two will be bolted to the heat sink so they won't move so I think that's a better solution so I think I can just take this copper clad board and just use an exacto knife just cut a slot uh, 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 here and here and then just peel off the uh, peel off the copper on the two sides. Um, I don't probably don't even need to do that. Just make sure there's a slot here and a slot here so they're electrically isolated. And then, um, yeah, I'll probably just do that. Uh, electrically isolated, then I'll uh, put the two together. So I'll get on, uh, I'll get on making one of these. But, uh, but first, uh, let, me, uh, let me go get the unit that I'm talking about and show you where everything fits. And I'm going to need that anyway to figure out the sizes of everything. All right, so if this doesn't look familiar to you, go watch my other video where I uh, open this up and tell you all about it and uh, some other videos about uh, what was inside and things. So um, anyway, so let's take the lid off. And this is just a big, just a big giant heat sink, flat, flat section on it. And uh, this is uh, where the uh, coax used to be and it's gone now. And uh, let's photograph it better this way. So I have this wire coming in here, 
and there's this little pedestal here and I'm going to take the um, let me uh, let me get rid of some of this wire just for now. Okay. So the uh, oops can't hold it. There we go. So that 250 watt resistor will live right about here, and then the, on this little pedestal here, we'll put that little PC board. And everything will go in there. So I think I've got room to. Um, there's already some holes in here, but they're uh, not the right spacing, and they're metric too. I think, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, so I will find a location for the um, for the resistor. I think what I'll do is I'll. Um, I'll find a good location for the resistor and go ahead and drill and tap that down first, and then that will give me an idea of um, where to put the uh, where to put the circuit board. All right, so I've got the holes drilled and tapped. They're uh, 632 screw size, and hopefully they're in center. Um, what I want to do is I want to use some uh, heat sink compound. Uh, so we will spread some of this awful stuff around. It gets everywhere if you're not careful. So I'm going to put some right around where it will sit. And then we'll put some on the resistor as well. Where'd my resistor go? Oh, there it is. All right. So. All right. It will have a lot on it. And oh, I'm not grabbing this the right way. All right. It goes about there. Can't get a screw in here. All right, that one fits. One of them always fits. The other one probably won't, unless I was careful enough. I was. Yay! So, if you don't have a set of uh, transfer punches, get yourself. But these are dirt cheap, and so. Um, what I normally do is I'll drill one hole and tap it, I'll put in the part, and then I'll use the transfer punch to center the other hole and then drill and tap the other hole. But because I had an edge that the um, the part actually could set up against, it wasn't going to move around too much, so I, 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 I used center punch, or a, a centering punch and I punched both holes at the same time and then, and then hope for the best, so it worked out. Torque these down, these nice and tight. Because these have to make the thermal contact. Lots of watts in a small area, you want to make sure it's heat's gonna get through there. Um, okay, so that worked out well. Can zoom in a little bit? Yeah, still can zoom in. Alright, so now we have a um, uh, a wire here, and uh, we have a little tab, and we already have a couple holes. Hmm. I think I still have the screws for those holes, so I might just use those as is. That would make life easy. So I'll make a little PC board that sets in there. Um, I'll use those two holes uh, with their metric threads. I still have the screws. I don't have a lot of metric threads in the shop. Almost everything I have is is English, so. But I can do that, and we'll have to have a little spacer underneath to get it up, get the PC board up to the right height for the um, 
uh, for that little tab. So uh, yeah, so let me get a little chunk of PC board uh, cut out and uh, see if we can't get that mounted. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, I've made my little PC board here and I've routed two grooves out. I used a little um, little small kerf saw, a Japanese kerf saw, and I cut these two slots out. So now there's a, a trace that goes across here, almost like a, uh, I think this is called micro strip. Um, anyway, uh, I'll solder down the tab here and solder down this wire here and uh, it should be ready to try out. All right, so the uh, moment of truth here. Uh, if we've done everything right, uh, we should measure uh, 50 ohms at the uh, connector here. So 49 point, oh, it's kind of varying, that's kind of weird. 49.6, so close enough. Button it back up. All right, before I put the lid on, I figured I'd try it out. So uh, I hooked it up to my uh, to my Yaesi radio over here. This watt meter's in in the uh, in the line, so we can watch how much power is coming out of that radio. It's coming into this wire here, cable here. It's going through that uh, weird coupler, and then it's going into the uh, uh, the load resistor. And I've got a uh, temperature thermometer. <laughs> That's what it is, infrared thermometer. Uh, so let's. Turn it on. Let's see uh, this button here. Okay, we've got 20 watts right now. Uh, so it's on CW 14 megahertz. Now we're put out putting about 20 watts. And uh, power meter here says about 20 watts. So it's measuring about right. Let's measure the temperature of the heat sink. Uh, let's see if I can. Can you see that? Maybe you can see that. I'll try to measure her down here. So 31, 32, 33, so about 33 centigrade. Let's uh, move the power up a bit. Let's see here. This is uh, uh, 60 watts. Let's see what kind of kind of temperature reading now. I don't think I'm on the hottest part. Oh, there we go. 41. It's kind of hard to, hard to aim this thing so close. But, uh, Oh, there we go. The fan just came on in the uh, on the Yesu, so its heat sink's getting hot. And uh, let's boost it up some more here. How far, how far will this go? 80 watts. That's about all this will put out this this particular frequency. So here's the fan again. Yeah, I should be able to put my finger on that. It shouldn't burn too bad. Oh, it's hot, but oh, ouch. Usually about 50C. If you if you can't hold your finger on it, you're getting up near 50C. So the top of this heat sink is now at 40, above 40, 42, 44. There we go, 48. Yeah, so it's getting pretty hot. Oh well, turn this off. But uh, yeah, I think this thing's going to uh, take some power. The heat sink is a little bit just. A, just ever so slightly warm, like an old piece of, to post piece of toast, not a new piece of toast, like a piece of toast that's been sitting around a couple minutes. It's just a, just a tiny bit warm. So, uh, yeah, good. I thought maybe I, I would have to put a post between uh, the top and bottom to get more heat up to the top, uh, because uh, the way that it used to work is the... Uh, where's my top? Hmm. I thought I had it right here. Oh, it's right below me here. So the top is just a flat piece and it's only going to make uh, thermal contact on the edges. Whereas before the uh, spool of co uh, coax kind of rested up against this uh, plate here. So I thought maybe if I put a um, uh, 
have a, a, just a little uh, spacer here between the two. It'll take the take the heat up to the top, but I don't know. Maybe I won't even bother with that. I'm not going to use this thing very often. I'm going to button it all up for now anyway, and we'll measure how much power is coming out of the uh, out of the coupler. Okay, so what are we looking at? This is the coupler. So I am inputting power through the uh, into the dummy load and measuring the output from the coupler. It's a 20 dB coupler, but it's a 20 dB coupler mostly at microwave. So uh, uh, we can see here we're about 20 dB here. So what frequency is that? Let's uh, let's go to the marker and. Uh, so when it hits 20 dB, we're at about 270 megahertz. So what we're looking at here is uh, centered at 200, so uh, 0 to 400. So you know, from 200 to 400, it's doing uh, it's doing what it's doing. Let's go up a bit. Let's uh, let's center it at let's say 500 megahertz. And we will span a gigahertz. That should be the whole thing. Okay, now let's get our marker again. Okay, so we're at 20 dB. It's it's bumpy. Uh, so it's not exactly 20 everywhere. It's got some ripple to it. Um, and then below 250 megahertz, um, it's starting to drop off pretty bad. So let's say at 144 megahertz, uh, 139 megahertz, we're at minus 24 dBm. And we've got a couple dB of loss in the cable, I didn't zero that out. So it's about 20 dB. Uh, so this thing's pretty good at 2 meters, 440 and above. Then it starts to drop off terrible, so at uh, 50 megahertz we're down at minus 31 dBm. Uh, 10 megahertz we're down at minus 44 dBm. So it's definitely not going to be a great coupler um, to measure anything accurately. But it will be a great tap, so um, I will be able to have a nice dummy load. I'll be able to tap it off, look at it with an oscilloscope. I'll be able to tap it off, look at it with a spectrum analyzer. Um, so I'll be able to use it that way. So it's still a useful thing to have. It's just not going to be a calibrated uh, 20 dB attenuator, which is what I was hoping for when I bought it. But I've seen, I've saved it. I've managed to turn it into something that I can use and didn't have to throw it away. And and uh, so it cost me 40 bucks. Okay, well, whatever. Um, still a nice dummy load. And actually, I didn't have any way of tapping off RF easily, so that's good too.